Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna focus on Google Docs and everything you need to know to be successful using Google Docs. Now, if you've never used Google Docs before, it's a product from Google and it's a word processor. So if you've used Microsoft Word before in the past, it's similar to that. Well, what's unique about it is you don't have to download anything. To access Google Docs, you just have to go to docs.google.com and everything takes place online here on your internet browser. Another way you could get to Google Docs is you could go to drive.google.com and here you could press new and choose Google Docs from the menu over here and jump into it that way. Basically what Google Drive is, it's the storage for all your Google documents. So for example, Google Docs, that's the word processor, then you have Google Sheets, Google Slides, and a bunch of more options like Google Forms. All these separate applications basically get stored on Google Drive. So if you want to learn more about Google Drive, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. But it's really a way to organize all your documents the same way you would do on any computer, but this is just on the internet and everything is stored on the Google server here that Google gives you. So let's jump back into docs.google.com. Here you'll have to log in using your Google account. If you don't have one, simply create one. And to create a new document on this page, we could go ahead and press this plus sign to create a blank document, which is what we're gonna do. But I wanted to show you that there are also templates. So if you're creating a meeting note, for example, or a brochure, you can start with these templates and there's a whole template gallery where you could see all these different types of templates. But I'm gonna go back in this case and we'll just press plus here and we'll start with a brand new Google Docs document. The very first thing I do with a Google Doc document is title the document. By default, it's untitled document. So if you double click here and just press delete, you could name it your own document and then you could press enter and then that will automatically save the document to your Google Drive. So the way it gets stored into Google Drive, it's automatically saved. That's another thing that's different between the applications you download versus the applications that are on the internet like this. They automatically save all changes. Next, after you name it, you wanna move it to the right place on your Google Drive. So if you press this little folder icon, it gets access to my drive, which is that Google Drive I mentioned. So here you could go ahead and create a folder and you could press the check mark right here to create that folder. And now inside of that folder, I could move my document here and it makes it nice and organized inside of your Google Drive. So once you learn about Google Drive, you could easily access all kinds of documents there in a nice organized way. So I usually name my doc and move it to the right place so I could find it easily later. So let's type our first sentence here. This is our first sentence. So you could simply type with your keyboard here and I wanna show you some of the basic formatting options and we'll get a little bit more advanced as we go. With anything that you type here, you have this bar on the top. So right now I'm using this font Arial, that's by default, but if I wanted to change my font, I have all these different fonts to choose from on this page and I could even press more fonts for more options. Then I have my font size. So here I have a bunch of different sizes or I could just type in my own size. So 34, press enter and that would change my font size. Then I have the typical bold, italic and underline options. So if I wanted to select my entire text here, I could make it bold, I could make it italic and I could make it underlined. So those are my three different options. And then next to that, you have your text color. So you could click this and change your text color here just like that let me go back to black and you have your highlighter so that will highlight the text for example if i highlight a yellow and click away it would highlight my text this way and let me press enter a couple of times you also have this text over here this drop down if you press this you could choose from these options too so if you want a title or a heading you could simply choose this way my first docs and I could go ahead and press enter. So that's how you would create a title, but just like any other thing, you could go ahead and just select it here with your mouse and change any of the options that I showed you. I'll come back to this option for inserting links and images in a second. Let me show you alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and select everything here and press delete, and I'm gonna paste text from a different document here. 
So I just copied the text from a different document. I'll come to edit and I'll go ahead and paste that document here. And let me just press this arrow here to close the side. So you can see the document here. And I made some spelling errors here to show you how to fix those as well. So here's basically just a description for this video that I'm making right now. So let's look at some of the alignment options here. So by default, if I select everything here, my whole document is aligned left. But if I wanted to align it to be center, I could press this option and it will align everything to the center of the document and everything to the right is this one. And this one just justifies everything left and right. You could also play with line spacing by pressing this option. So if you wanted to double space everything, that's the option over here. I'll go back to the single spacing. And then you could number things and bullet things too. Those are your options over here. And this is to indent documents. So if you wanted to indent a paragraph, you select that paragraph and indent it this way. And that will create this kind of space. Anytime you could press Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC to undo something that you've done in the past, you could also do that from the edit menu. That's the option undo and redo. Now let's look at spell check and word count, two options that I find very useful. So for spell check, if you come to tools, the very first option is spelling and grammar. So you could have the default spelling and grammar checked on right here and I'll select that and it'll show me all these options that I've misspelled. So I could either ignore things or accept things to make those changes here. So I could go through my entire document and make the necessary changes over here using this option. Then you have tools and word count, which comes in really handy. So if you select this, it's going to show you how many pages, how many words, how many characters you have, and you could press OK. And sometimes I like to turn this on over here to display that while I'm typing. So if I come down here and type more, you could see that my word count is increasing if I type more words and I could switch that to be the character count that is showing me as well. So I'll go ahead and delete this and come back to my document. So I'll change this to word count. Next, let me go down on the bottom of my document here and I want to insert an image. So there is an option right here, insert image, click this and you have multiple ways to insert an image. You could upload it from a computer. So if this is something on your internal computer, you could upload it from there. You could also search the web and you have these other options like using Google Photos or Google Drive, for example. Typically, I like to search the web and it brings this option here. So I could search Google Docs here, press enter, and it will pull different things for me from the web. So if I wanted to add this icon, I could just select it and down here, press insert and it inserts it into my document just like that. Now I could anytime select this, resize it here. I could go ahead and decide how the text wraps around this image. So you could see a couple of different ways for that. And if you don't want it, you could select that and press delete. Here, I'll do one from the computer too to show you upload from my computer. It's gonna get access to my computer here. So for example, if I was to just select one of these YouTube thumbnails, I could press open and it will insert it for me this way. Again, I could select it and decide how it's going to be visible or go ahead and resize it here if I wanted to. And you have some other options for images over here, like cropping and images available here. Now I have that crop option, so I could go ahead and do that and press enter and it will crop images for me right here on Google Docs. After that, we have inserting links, which comes in really handy also. So if I select any text that I've typed out, I could highlight it and I could press this link option. And here I could type in a link. So for example, I'll, I'll type out my website here, howfinity.com, press apply. And now when I share this document, anybody clicking this link could go directly to that website. And it automatically underlines it and turns it blue when you turn something into a link. Anytime you could jump on here and remove that link here by just pressing remove link and it'll go back to the way it was. Now let's look at inserting header and footer. So over here, there's the insert option and we look at inserting images. You also have a bunch of other options that we're not gonna go through, but you could do tables, you could insert drawings, charts, but here we'll look at header and footer. So in this case, let's do a footer here. And as you can see, it created a footer option for us. This is the footer. So you could type your footer here. And then if I click over, this becomes my footer. And I have some options over here like footer format. So I'll select this option and I could go ahead and format it a little bit differently. 
like the margins could change here and that's just how far from the bottom of the page it is by default these are the options you get for header and footer you could also make them different for the first page i typically don't change anything but i'll press apply here now let me show you this really powerful option over here there's a little icon called explore i'll press it and basically explore lets you search all the docs that you've created here or the web so for example here i'll type in google docs again and i'll press enter and you could see i get different options here i could search the cloud this first option is actually pulling some of the things that i've typed out for example the google docs that i'm creating here is pulled up here and some other things here in my google drive so that's where it's pulling this option but i could also go to web and it will just basically use google so wikipedia shows up here and some of these other options for what google docs searches show up on google and you have images so this is another way to search for images and just add them over here like inserting an image just by pressing plus and just like that is inserting that into my google doc that's the explore option that comes in really really handy especially once you use it often now let's get to collaborating and sharing a document this is one of the things that makes google docs shine and that's up here if you press share right now it's going to say this is private just for me so if i just doing this for myself as a word processor this is the way to go but typically you want to share a document so press that and you could share it with other people so simply type in their name or email address so i'll invite my other account here and you could add multiple people so just press enter or tab and type out other emails here and you could type a note can you help me so this would be the note that will be attached to the email that google will send notify people is checked on but make sure you press this drop down because we want to give different permissions to different people so if you want multiple people to edit the same project which is possible in google docs you could do can edit and that person will also be able to edit at the same time i am it's a very very powerful tool you could actually see their edits live you could then choose can comment and then if you want someone's feedback and their comments this is the option you would choose or can view basically they can't make any edits they could just look at your document so if you're sharing this for 30 people to view that's the option to select here so nobody could make any changes to the document even commenting in this case i'll do can edit so i could show you how powerful that is and i'll go ahead and press send and you should get a little notification here that is being shared with someone else also now let me jump into a different computer i want to show you in real time when someone else that you invite signs into google doc what ends up happening okay so the other person i send the invite to has accepted the invite by clicking the email and now they have permission so look up here you'll see two different icons one is just myself and the other icon is the other person i invited and you could also see their mouse here so right here you see that pink little cursor here that's them so if they start typing let me just use a different computer to show you i'm typing here in real time on the other computer just with my left hand and you could see that is showing here on my computer and we don't even have to be in the same country for this to work and this is one of the powerful ways google docs uses collaboration so you can both work on the same document so now if i don't like what they wrote i could select it and press delete and it will delete it on what they're looking at on their google docs so very very powerful option over here and even if you have 10 people here anytime you could click one of their names and it will jump into that part of the document and that's because i did give them the option to edit so if i didn't want them to edit i could just give them the option to comment and then they will have that option so let me go to the share option i'm going to click it one more time and i'm going to select this person's name the other computer i invited and i'm going to change the permission here from can edit to can only comment so i'll select this and i'll press save changes so now i just typed a comment from the other computer and you can see now it shows up a little bit differently it shows up in pink and it shows up as a comment over here so if i want to accept that suggestion i could press the check mark or i could press x so this is how you get someone else to basically use the commenting section to edit a document or make suggestions to it so i'll press x and that section just disappears so they won't have the same permission to edit like i showed you in the first part but they can make comments which comes in very handy and you can look at all the comments here on the right side
And they also have the ability to change font, color, and all the other options that we already went through here. And finally, let me show you a couple of different options under the file menu. Click this option. And one thing I want to show you is to download a document for a different purpose. So if you want to take this off Google Docs, you could save it as a PDF or Microsoft Word or any of these options here. So if I save this as a PDF document, it will just save it to my computer as any different type of document. So just like that, it's downloaded to my computer and I could open this as a PDF doc just like this and I could go ahead and print or email this, which comes in really handy. Let me go ahead and close this one and I'll go to file and let me show you how to print. So that's the last option on this menu. You could go ahead and select that. And this basically just shows you an, an overview of what your document looks like. And you could go ahead and select the number of copies, choose if it's black and white or color on this option and choose your printer on top. Very, very simple print option, but it's one of the ways I use Google Docs often as well is printing documents. And Google Docs has a lot more to offer and I'll continue to make videos about specific questions but I think this should give you a nice overview of Google Docs and how to get the most out of it. I hope you found it useful. Please give this a thumbs up. I post these type of tutorials every single day on this channel and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.